You have probably seen these kinds of text effects in viral Instagram Reels. They instantly grab attention and look super polished. In this video, I'll show you how you can easily create them in Premiere Pro without any plugins or whatsoever. I'll explain how to animate the text, how to add a glow and how to reuse the effect easily all within Premiere Pro. So let's break it down. So here I have opened up Premiere Pro. I've created a sequence and imported a basic background. If you are editing an Instagram Reel, then you can create your sequence in vertical format. But for the sake of this tutorial, I have created my sequence in standard landscape mode so that you can see the text properly. So once you have created your sequence, just go to this text tool and click on your program monitor and it will create a graphic clip for you. And to see and manipulate all the properties of this graphic clip, all you have to do is select the clip and go to the properties tab. If you can't see this tab, then you can go to this window menu and from here you can turn on the properties. So it has created a text layer over here. So I can double click on it and write my first text. So let's write create this amazing I will create my whole text in three layers so on the first layer I want to keep only this portion now I can right click on this layer and click on duplicate to create another layer let's double click on it and type in the next part so this is the second part. So now let's take the selection tool. Now if I scroll down and go to this align and transform options from here, I can change its position property. So let's drag it down and then again, let's duplicate this layer once more to create another layer. And then I can double click on it to select the new layer and I can write in the last part of my entire text. And similarly, I can scroll down and change its position. So this is my entire text. So now for each of the layer, we have to align them in the center so that if we want to change the text later, we can do that easily. So for this layer, I can change its alignment to center and we can also center the text vertically. And let's go to these align and transform options once again. And from here, we can align the center horizontally and vertically. Next, we have to take the next layer and do these same things. And for the last layer also, do the same thing and now finally I can take the first layer and drag it on top and for the last layer I can drag it below. Now I want to change the fonts for the top and the bottom layers I would like to use something cursive and artsy and for the middle layer I would like to use a bold font. So for this layer I will go for a font called gloss and bloom for this layer as well I will use the gloss and bloom font and for the middle layer I will use the Montserrat and I will go for the absolute bold font, which is the Montserrat black. Now I will change their sizes with the font size option. So for the middle layer, I will make it quite big. So around 150 would be good enough. And for the other layers, I will make them a bit smaller. So around 70 should be good enough for both of them. Now, as I have changed the font sizes, so I have to align them once again. So we have created the basic design. Now we will add a glow to the middle layer and then we will add some animation. And in this video, I'm giving you the ideas. You can also create other effects as per your liking. Now, as I want to add the glow only to the middle layer, so I can select the middle layer and put it into a group by clicking on this icon. So now the middle layer is inside this group 01 folder. I can also rename this for better clarity. So let's rename it to mid text. Now let's go to the effects library and search for drop shadow. Under video effects and perspective, you will find the drop shadow effect. Just drag it and put it over the text effect and below the folder. If you drag the effect over here, you can see the icon is changing to a hand and a plus icon. And there is also a line that is showing exactly where you are going to put the effect. So you have to put the effect on top of the text and below the folder. So the effect of this drop shadow is being applied on this layer only. Now you can go to the effect controls and from here, let's change the shadow color to white, decrease the distance to zero. If you you increase it you can see the drop shadow is going far away from the text as per the angle you have selected and if you keep it to zero that means it's directly behind the text at a 90 degree angle so now if you increase the softness to around 25 it will create this beautiful looking glow i can add another drop shadow on top of this too and similarly go to the effect controls change the color to white decrease the distance to zero and increase the softness to around 100 to create another glow i can even add another drop shadow on top of this previous three and then go to the the effect controls and change the color of the drop shadow to white, decrease the distance to zero and increase the softness to around 300. So now you can see it's creating a nice glow. I can change the opacity of the topmost glow to around 15%, the middle glow to around 25% and for the first glow I can keep it at 35% because I want a subtle glow. Now to change the color of the text I can take a tint effect. 
you can find it under video effects and color correction and to put the tint you can go to the properties tab and on top of these four layers now you can drag the tint and place it on top of these four layers now go to the effect controls once again and map white to any color that you like suppose i want to make it a neon green so i can select a green color and it will change the color of the text to the same color along with all the glows because the tint effect is being applied on top of all these effects if i put it on top of everything then it will turn all the text into green color right so that's why we are putting these effects into a folder so these effects are being applied only to this layer so that's how you add the glow. Now let's add some quick animations. Now close this folder and let's bring down this layer at the bottom because I want this text on top of this one as well. So now if I show you, I can select this layer and if I change the Y position, you can see now the text is on top of this layer, which is looking even better. So around 635 is looking pretty good. Now I want this top layer to reveal from bottom and to create that animation, I can select the graphic element and take this rectangle tool to create a rectangular model mask so let's create a rectangular shape which covers the entire text now as i am focusing on this layer only so we have to take these two layers and put them into a new group let's rename it to top text now i have to put the shape layer on top of this text layer so that i can use this layer as a mask and to do that you can select the layer and just turn on this mask with shape option and turn on mask only fill now this layer is acting like a mask and with this option turned on it will show everything that's inside it and it won't show anything which is outside of this mask so if i select this layer and change its y position so you can see as it is going outside of the mask boundary it's getting invisible so now all i have to do is add the animation and to add the animation i can search for the transform effect and inside the video effects and transform folder you will find the transform effect just drag it and put it on top of the text layer and below the shape layer so this transform effect will only affect this layer we can rename it to transform top text for easy understanding now let's go to the effect controls so the transform top text effect is already selected to have motion blur in the animation we can check off this use composition shutter angle option and set the shutter angle to around 180 for the most natural motion blur now if i use this position property it will affect the top layer like this so let's move about five frames and let's zoom into it and create a keyframe and go to the first frame and change the y value so that it goes out of the mask boundary you can click on this arrow icon to change the interpolation of the keyframes just click on this keyframe and change the curve to something like this now the animation will be smoothed out the animation will start super fast and gradually slow down to this position so now after changing the velocity curve you can see it's showing up so we have to set the y position once again so now the animation is complete if you think it's coming super fast then you can drag the end keyframe a bit farther away so this is looking pretty good now for the mid text i can select the text and suppose i want it to come at this moment so i can select the text effect and create the animation directly from here as well so for this layer i will create a keyframe for the position property and the opacity property and then if i go back to the effect control you can see for this text it has created these two keyframes so if i move a few frames forward so around here once the animation of the previous layer is complete i want the animation of this layer to finish so i will create two keyframes over here and let's go back to the previous keyframe and put it down and change its opacity to zero similarly i can change the velocity curve for these as well and for the opacity i can just right click on the keyframe and choose ease in and for this one i can choose ease out this is what we have done so far it's looking pretty good right but you can see if you go with this method you won't get the motion blur so to counter that we can add a directional blur let's go to the properties tab take this directional blur and put it on top of these layers let's go back to the effect controls and from here i can create a keyframe for the blur length which will come down to zero at this last keyframe so here it should be zero and here i can create this fake motion blur and to see only the keyframe properties i can click on this filter properties option and click on this show only keyframe properties then it will only show all the properties where i have created a keyframe so that way it will be a bit easier for me to work so i can drag this starting keyframe of the directional blur and align it with the position and opacity keyframes as well and i can right click on the first keyframe and select ease out and the last keyframe to ease in if you think it's looking a bit too much you can just decrease the directional blur amount to around 15. 
I think it's still looking a bit too much. So I can keep it to around 10. So now it's showing a bit of motion blur. So this is what we have created so far. And for this last layer, I will do something similar to the top text. So let's select this layer and create another group and rename it to bottom text. I can drag the top text on top so that it will be easier for me to organize. Now let's create another shape with this rectangle tool and I will drag it below this text layer so that I can align the shape. Now I want to align the bottom edge of this shape to the bottom of the text. And to do that, I can take the selection tool, click on this shape layer and from this corner, I can just drag it and align it with the text. Now I can bring up the shape layer on top of this text layer and then go to its properties. And I have to just check the mask with shape option and mask only fill option. So it will do the similar thing as this shape. Now I can take the transform tool once again and put it in between these two layers and let's rename it to bottom text. Now let's go to the effect controls tab. This is the transform for the bottom text. Now I have to click on this icon and select show all properties so that I can see the properties of the transform effect. Let's select this and let's find out where I want to start the animation. So around here, I want to start the animation for the bottom text. So let's create a keyframe for the position option and also uncheck the use composition shutter angle option and set the shutter angle to 180 manually. This will create the most natural motion blur. Now similarly, let's move forward a few frames and create another keyframe. Let's go to the first one and bring it down. Open up the velocity curves and adjust them properly and let's set the y value properly. So now it will look like this. I think we can bring these animations a bit earlier and I can create the last animation a bit faster so that it ends here. So it's looking pretty good. Now if I want I can change the duration of this effect to around two seconds and I can create an end animation. So now to create the end animation, I can go to the properties tab and put all of these folders into a single folder. Let's call it text animation. Now, if I take transform effect and put it on top, now this transform effect will control all the layers at once. Let's go to the effect controls. And with this transform effect, I can position the entire text effect wherever I want. I can also use the vector motion properties. I will suggest you to use this scale property if you want to zoom into the texts. That way it will treat the text as vector graphics and will not have any quality loss. But if you use this scale property to zoom into the text, then you will have some quality loss because it will treat the graphics as Rasterized layers. I have explained this in detail in a previous video. So if you want to know more about this, then you can check out that video of mine. So to change the scale or the position of this entire graphics, I will suggest you to use the vector motion properties. And that is why I'm not creating any kind of keyframes on these properties so that we can use them freely and do not mess up with any kind of accidental keyframe generation. For the end animation, go to the end of this clip and come back a few frames maybe around seven frames. And with this transform all effect, I can generate a keyframe for the scale and opacity. And here also I can set the shutter angle to 180 to have some motion blur. Let's move forward a few frames and let's bring the scale down to zero and the opacity down to zero as well. Let's change the velocity curves as well so that it gradually builds momentum. For the opacity, I can just ease out and ease in these keyframes. So this is the end animation. So this is how the whole animation is looking. Right now, let me show you how you can easily repurpose this clip anywhere. So if you want to use this same effect again in this timeline, then all you have to do is press and hold alt and click and drag this clip to create a duplicate copy of this clip. And on this duplicate copy, you can just go to this properties tab, expand the folder and you can just change the text. Suppose I want to change the top text. I have to take the text tool and double click on this layer and type in the new text for the middle layer. I can select the mid layer and double click on it and type in the new phrase. And for the last line as well, I can change that too. And the animation will be working just fine. If you want to change the color, you can just go to this tint effect, go to its effect controls and open up the effect and change the color of the map white to option to your desired color. Suppose I want to go for this red color. I can easily change the color of the text that way and the animation will be working just fine. Here I can see the bottom part of the Y is cut off. So while creating the shape layer, you have to be a bit cautious. So I can just go to this shape layer and drag the bottom edge a bit. So it will reveal the bottom of the Y. And if I check the animation, I can confirm it's working. 
And as I've just shown you, you can place the entire text effect anywhere in the frame. And to do that, you can use this vector motion properties. So you can decrease the size of the entire text. And if you click on this vector motion option, then you can just place the text wherever you want and everything will work just as fine. So these are some of the ideas. You can add more effects to each of the layers. If you want, you can create and add more animations as per your liking. So you can create a lot of things as per your creativity. So if you have found this video helpful, then give it a like, share it with your video editor friends and subscribe to my channel right now.